I was minding my business and boom, this gets sent to my timeline. Listen to this guy and when we come back, I will tell you exactly why he's frustrated with the system. Can you guys see it dipping? Look at it, 41.8. You might think this is night time, but this is actually, it, it just went off, all right? And it will keep coming on and going off, all right? So let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, each of these batteries are about 350,000 naira, all right? Now, I'm making it clear to you, solar panels are not the most effective way to generate power during bad weather condition you are here bashing someone that is probably better than you in every aspect of your life with this little misny knowledge you know about the only thing you know in your life which is maybe solar panels ignorance is not a crime but when you wear the armor of ignorance with so much pride and confidence then you might need to reassess yourself now this is exactly the problem with this system this dude is mixing batteries together first and foremost whoever did this connection for you is a carpenter so basically you engage the services of a carpenter to do the job of an installer and he did the very best he could. And the reason why they say you should not combine different batteries together is very simple because the batteries contain different chemical composition, different chemical additives, different chemical reactions, different specific gravities, different acidic levels. The discharge rate and the charge rate is not the same. It has different current charge and discharge rate and you mix these batteries together. So what happens is that one will always charge faster than the other. And once it gets filled up, it begins to form resistance. And when it forms resistance, your inverter and charge controller stops charging. Now, when it stops charging, what do you think is gonna happen to the other one that is not filled up yet? Because one is filled up while the other one is not filled up yet. That one is gonna be on that state. It would never fill up. And if this happened over a long period of time, this particular battery is going to sulfate. The one that fills up fast is obviously compromised. It's stressed out. It keeps trying to compensate for the one that is not fully charged. And it keeps pushing voltage back and forth in a bid to ensure that there's stability in the voltage, thereby stressing this particular battery out. So if this activity continues for a very long time, the two batteries are going to experience premature failure. And that's when you realize that these batteries are no longer holding power like it used to. Now, what is the essence of having so much batteries in your battery bank? It's to store energy, right? But when the batteries are not fully charged to its capacity, it's not going to hold much of energy, which is the reason why your system keeps shutting down all the time. And let me further tell you, this battery that you have mixed up together is a potential danger. It could explode. Never equalize those batteries. When you have two batteries connected of different brands, during equalization, the batteries can explode because there's instability in the voltage flow. Now, this charge controller is absolute trash. I won't lie, right? Of course, I agree with you. So I'm looking at 60 amps charge controller. That's very insufficient to be able to get you in energy into your system because currently you have eight batteries and you also did mention that you have 12 solar panels on the roof. Now, the problem here is that it's gonna be a limitation for you because of the 60 amps that you have. The moment the charge controller hits 60 amps, it's going to limit the energy that is coming in and there's gonna be a total waste and disservice to the 12 solar panels that you have on the roof because the very much it can take in the cumulative wattages from your solar panel is gonna be around 2,500 watts or 60 amps. So you might need to change your charge controller upgrade it a little bit to like 80 amps or 100 amps to be able to harvest in more energy to be able to load in energy into your storage devices which are your batteries so that when it's raining you can have more energy to play with so the time duration where it's going off it's not going to be the same anymore in fact you might not witness that blackout anymore because from what you're complaining right here your system keeps shutting down back and forth because you don't have enough energy to continue to go on so you might need to change your charge controller so looking at the cables itself in functional value the cables are very insufficient to be able to handle the electrons that you know moves back and forth you needed to use something a lot bigger than what we're seeing because the cables are a lot very small in diameters to be able to handle the job it's been subjected to so when you have insufficient cables driving the electrons that moves back and forth in the cables the current the voltage and all of that you begin to witness resistance in the cables and sometimes if you're very observant and you touch the cables you notice that it's heating up and now when there's resistance in the cables 
it means you're losing energy along the way. The much energy you would have harvested to come into the system is being wasted. There's correct sizing for cables, just like the way you size your solar panels and your batteries. So if the cables are not well sized, you're gonna have this problem because the cables are the drivers that get you in the energy to be able to charge your batteries and all of that. So that, in my opinion, is fault number three. So the battery is a little bit untidy, no usage of rack. We just kept the batteries on the floor. The wiring's are a bit scattered. Woof. There seems to be a lot of problems with this installation here. Uh, the charge controller looks a little bit substandard from what we can see here. So that in itself is also gonna bring a problem because if you have a wrong or defective solar component, it's going to also affect the energy generation that you're gonna be having into your system. All right, so these are the things that we're looking at. Uh, we haven't seen what the solar panels look like on the roof. Is it a problem? Was it configured properly the way it should? What type of solar panel is it? Is it an original solar panel or is it a substandard solar panel? That's all we can take, everybody. My name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and do not forget to like. See you guys in the next video.